proud of our team. Uh, four straight coming out of the bye week now, and uh, thought the guys really, really played hard. Uh, challenged them to be the most physical team in the stadium. Uh, challenged them to, to play that style of football to keep the crowd out of it. Uh, mission accomplished. Virginia Tech plays hard, and I knew they wouldn't quit, and they got proud guys, and you got to give them credit for their comeback effort there. But uh, three score lead, you know, it was too much for them to overcome, and you know, I was really proud of the way Brennan played. You know, played tough, man. Played really hard, took care of the football. It's fun watching them play like that, and I'm just very happy for him. You know, it was great to see KC throw a touchdown. You know, for a freshman to do all the things he's doing. And I thought Robert really called a good game, Coach and I. Kept him off balance all night, had a lot of good misdirection going. And it was a good game plan, and the kids executed it really well. Questions? Yeah, five touchdown stretch, five drives in a row with a touchdown. You guys, how's that just fun going through that when you're kind of feeling it? Yeah, I mean, we haven't had that really since Marshall. And so, uh, it's a great feeling. You know, it builds confidence for the team. I think, you know, defensively, uh, we got pretty generic with the three score lead and we weren't blitzing a lot and, and just kind of playing pre vet and you know, it's really not our style. I think, you know, Tony probably would love to heat it back up. But uh, offensively when you're getting touchdowns and possessing the ball twenty minutes in the first half, it's hard for the other team to catch up. So yeah, it's a good game plan. This was the team's first time coming up to like a packed, you know, intimidating road game. Just how do you think they handled that atmosphere? A plus. Yeah. yeah, I mean, their crowd was taken out of the game, with the exception of the kickoff return that they had um, in the first half, which led to a touchdown for them. Good job by them. But uh, I thought we kept the crowd out of it. You know, we didn't have any false starts due to crowd noise. And uh, a lot of teams, when you watch film, that's not what you see. You see guys over and over and over, jumping off sides. And so I thought our kids did a nice job with that. Yeah, what were you able to take advantage of with their defense that led to Brennan you know, throwing for 200 and, and running for over 110? There was just a lot of good misdirection in there. Their, their eyes, they were moving all over the place. We shifted and got in a lot of different formations, made them use the rules. We broke some tackles. Brennan made some nice throws. And then some of the play designs I thought were really, really good uh, against how they were trying to defend us. You mentioned misdirection, maybe with Robert. Is there ever kind of any like mad side just type oh, over the past few weeks when? Hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Just how, how fun is that to see him create this and try to? Yeah. I mean, I would say from scratch, but to try to rebuild it to where it is now. He's spinning the dial, as he calls it. You know, and uh, so there's you know, 25 years of calling offense in that man's head, and he goes back to things he did back in the day, things he did at Virginia, things he did at Syracuse. Things that you know we're watching on film and then plays off of plays. Man, does he do a good job of that? And uh, I thought Robert called a really good game tonight. On a personal level, I imagine you're really happy for him to yeah. after what's been going on. Yeah, I mean, I, I knew it would take time, um, and the players have to play well for the coach <laughs> as well. And when you're dropping passes and false starting all the time like we were in the Duke game, I don't care who's calling plays; they're not going to be very good. And uh, the guys have taken it on their shoulders to play cleaner and play harder and execute. And that helps Robert as a play caller. If we're efficient, man, he can do a lot of good things. The last time this program won here was back in 04. I mean, some of your players weren't even alive at that point, which wow. is crazy to think about. Were you? I was. <laughs> I was, actually. Um, I don't know how old, but I was. Um, and, you know, it just feels like the last several weeks they, they've – you know, they, they've really broken history in some aspects. Yeah. Um, did you expect this coming into the season? You never know what to expect. Like, you know, you guys, um, not just you, media in general, make such a big deal out of preseason. And even the first three games, like the whole world ends when a team loses. And yeah. It's a long season, you know. There's a lot, a lot of stuff. And November's the key month. And, uh, and that's why I get frustrated when you see coaches get fired you know, before the end of the season, so many things can happen. And uh, I don't know, you know, I, yeah. at this stage in my career, I try not to predict because there are certain things out of my control that change things. Quarterback injuries change things. Uh, certain personnel players, like who would we be without number 10 on offense right now? Like the fact that we have him playing the way that he is. Um, 
you just can't predict everything, you know, and I'm just proud of how we've gotten better. Um, we're peaking at the right time. And offense, defense, special teams, all the guys are pitching in, the coaches are doing a good job, and it's going to be a fun robbery week. We've got two good football teams with the same record, I think. Um, pretty sure, isn't that accurate? Didn't they lose to Clemson? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so two, two teams, eight and three. Um, so it'll be a lot of fun. Speaking of getting better, have you seen Armstrong get better of late than he was earlier in the year? Much better. Yeah. Yeah, he's just having fun. You know, I think he was, he had such a tough year last year, and I think he had such a, a desire to fix that. And sometimes you press, you know, and you're, I've got to be better, i got to be better. And that's not how you play better, actually. You play better by just doing what the offense needs you to do and letting your skill set be your skill set. If you're a drop back guy, that's what you are. If you're a mobile guy, that's what you are, you know. And, and running's a little bit of both. And just play the game and play with your teammates and enjoy it. And that's what he's doing now. He's just having fun out there and making plays. And what a great run he had there in the second half. How much have you seen him as a spark to the team kind of rallying around him the last two Yeah, weeks? big spark. You know, and I think the, the team embraced his journey, you know, his suffering, uh, his pain, and saw just a good teammate. And really, man, did he gain respect in those four weeks just being a good teammate after he went through what he did. And then the opportunity came, I think everybody was pulling, like, all right, man, let's go. We want to see you succeed. And so that's been cool, you know, to see the team rally around him like that. Over the past few weeks, you know, Peyton hasn't had to do too much. You know, he's not, like, you know, trying to make up for other people's mistakes because the defense is playing at such a high level. But when everything goes wrong, he is capable of, you know, cleaning up and, you know, saving a touchdown and stuff like that. How helpful is it to have Someone like him. Yeah, he's, he's a stud, man. I mean, all the accolades he's getting are so deserved. He's earned them. Um, and boy, has he suffered to, to earn them. You know, physically, um, the emotions of not playing as many times as he's had to watch. And some players can watch a game and have fun. They're dancing to music. Like, to him, it's depressing to watch a game. Like, he wants to be on the field. And so I'm so happy for him. And yeah, I'm enjoying watching him, too. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm, I'm taking it in. I'm definitely taking it in because I know he is a generational player. He is. You had the touchdown right before half. I think it was conception on reception, maybe 18 seconds or something. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah how big of a – because that kind of a, a momentum swing. You think? Yeah, it was a two for as we call it. We scored to close the half, and then we scored to open the half. So that was a, a two-score two swing in the game. Um, for people out there that want to learn, that's a two for right there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so that was fun. But what a great play. You know, they, they dropped into cover three and a little seam route. Brennan hit him right in stride and KC did the rest. And so that was a really nice play before that. And just talk about how important um, KC uh, has been to this team's success all season long, too. Yeah, I mean, he's the most explosive player on offense. Um, he's a spark, for sure. Versatile. Makes up for, you know, things we're missing in the backfield. We have, you know, one player that stopped playing, another player that's injured. And so we've had to fill in. Um, we fell in with the quarterback runs, fell in with receiver runs. And so the creativity in the backfield is is working. And I don't know if the stats were I can get them, but felt like we ran the ball pretty effectively tonight. Do you have an update on, on Julian Gray? It didn't seem like he was out there tonight. Yeah, we should have him back next week. He got banged up a little bit in the last game. So we were resting him and didn't think standing around all game would be good for him. But we should have him back. Now, Isaiah Shirley was a playmaker at tight end in high school. Yeah. Was he pretty fired up when you – you know, watching their film, there was a lot of explosive runs against them in, in long edge formations. And we just didn't feel like we had a guy that matched up on their defensive ends. And I, I said, well, would you take a D lineman? And Robert's like, heck yeah. And I'm like, well, he weighs 280. He's like, perfect. You know, and surely he had done that. And so well, let's give him a shot on, in practice on Tuesday and see how he looks. And very natural. So yeah, that was helpful to have him in there blocking. I'm excited to see the film. Looked like he dented them pretty good. What does it say about this team that you can take a guy like that or, you know, a guy like Jordan Poole and put him on the offense and let them, you know, just yeah, have man. fun and do their thing? Players <laughs> making plays, having fun, want to be on the field, helping their brothers win. Coaches finding a way to get the best players out there to make things happen. And, you know, I'm very proud of those guys and it's fun to see it. You know, I mean, uh, Isaiah Shirley's been on the scout team for most of the year, but. He's been making life hell on our offense, so I was like, you know what? Why don't you go make someone else's life hell <laughs> for a day? And uh, so proud of him and happy for him.
Do you think that risk taking has led to a lot of the success in the last four weeks? What risk taking? Just in, just in terms of like moving guys around, yeah. or do you view it as a risk? I look at it as putting the pieces in the right place, you know. And scared money doesn't make money, and so. To me, it's some of these other guys are on film not getting it done, and like we can keep doing that, and that's the definition of insanity: repeating something, hoping it gets better, right? And or we can put someone else in there and see if they can do it. And so that's what we've done. And to our players' credit, you know, they want to just play. I don't care what position they play; they just want to get out there and play. And I love that about them. All right, we got a bus ride here. I need to get back. Thank you. First time.